I, uh, as Michael says, I'm Andy Beverly. Um, I've been doing pearl dancer now for a year or two. Uh, I was very much a sort of part-time hacker, and uh, just the last year or two I've been doing a, a lot of um, stuff full-time. Um, one, one of the things I found when I was doing that, I wrote sort of two or three web applications, and I found that I was doing the, the same stuff over and over again in terms of user authentication. Um, I used, um, I don't know, I, was, um, I think Dave Pressions wrote it originally in the bracket port to, to, to Dancer 2, um, but I found that some, I was adding some stuff in each time for my application. So I'm going to talk about um, the, the plugin itself and give an introduction to it. And then I'm going to also talk about some of the things that, um, that I added um, over the last few months. Um, so this is what we're going to go through. I'm going to talk about um, why you should use all the tangible for your uh, user authentication. Uh, I'm going to talk about why I needed it and what sort of led on to the, the changes that I did. Um, and then I'm going, to give a, uh, I'm going to spend a lot of my presentation um, to doing a demo. Uh, dare I say, I've opted to do a live demo. Um, I did this presentation once before at, my, um, at the local um, poll mongers. I didn't do a demonstration, but I thought it'd just be really nice to show how easy it is to get user authentication up and running really, really quickly um, with all the sort of things that you want um, straight away. So we'll see how that goes, hopefully it'll go okay. Um, and then I'm also going to talk about those additional features and show you how quickly those are to get up and running as well, um, again, hopefully with a live demonstration. Uh, so why should you use Authic Sensible? Um, you'll see as we go along, it's absolutely minimal code to get up and running. Um, you know, we all like we all like programming web applications, but what we don't like doing is the boring stuff, and quite often the boring stuff is things like user authentication. So Authic Sensible allows you to get up and running some really quickly for, um, authentication so you can concentrate on the, uh, on the things you actually want to do for your web application. Uh, it's got several back-end providers available. Um, I'm, I'm only going to look at two of them. Uh, there are a few available, but the, the clues in the name is Extensible, so if you wanted to write your own, uh, that's certainly achievable. Uh, I'm, I'm in particular going to look at the DBIT provider. Um, and, that, and the good thing about that is it can use your existing DBIT schema. So if you've already got a DBIT schema in, in your web application, it will straight away use that. Uh, if you don't, then you'll need to create one. Uh, and so it's got lots of user management features, which I'll, I'll go on to look at shortly. Uh, so what did I need from my authentication module? Um, I needed encrypted passwords, that's what it goes without saying. Uh, I needed roles, so I needed different users to be able to have different roles. Um, so th those, were, those were given in the um, module from the beginning, I think. Um, but I also needed a few other things. Um, I needed to know when the last uh, login was of that particular user. Uh, I wanted to be able to update their details easily without having to rewrite code at each of my applications. Um, I wanted the ability to, create, to be able to create a user easily and send them a welcome email, again with minimal code. Um, and I wanted to very easily be able to do password resets. I don't know about you, but I, password resets is always the thing I've done great last in the web application, but it's always the thing that the users are complaining about. So um, this will allow you to do it nice and easily. Uh, but I wanted to be able to set password expiries. Uh, okay, so I'm going to, going to like I said, the bulk of this presentation will be a, a live demonstration. Um, I'm quite happy for you to chip in um, as we go along, um, but, um, but I'll get through and I'll start doing that. I'm going to have to sit here and wait so I can drive the computer. Okay, so what I've done is set up a, a very basic web application. This is pretty much just um, the default dancer configuration you get when you create a new dancer application, all I've done is apply a bootstrap template to it. Um, so if you look at my uh, roots, you see I've got nothing in there other than the, uh, the main home page. And if you look at my configuration file, that's pretty much the default dancer configuration file. Yep. Simplex off. So it's simplex off, but it's easier to read. Okay, yes. Yeah, okay, sorry. That I do. Um... Yeah, I don't think I'm limited by. Um... I'll see what I might be able to do. I think I'm limited because I'm trying to share the um, mirror that displays. I did have it on a, a higher resolution. Yeah, 
So like I say, it's a very, um, very basic dancing configuration, which hopefully most of you are familiar with. Uh, what we're going to do, so I'm going to start off with a very simple demonstration. What we're going to do is, rather than starting with the, um, the DBIC provider, we're going to start with what's called the config provider, and that just allows you to pull a username and password straight into your configuration file. So, you know, a nice, quick and easy way to get your application running up initially. Um, to do that, all I do is add the details into here. Oops. Passwords into this, but like I said, it's just a, a way to get them running nice and quickly. So, all I've done is I've done my configuration file. Um, to use that, what we need to do is say, So again, I've got my son web application there. If I try and go to the restricted area, I'm straight away prompted to, the, um, to this. Now, the great thing about this is the provider's put in all these routes for me, so I haven't had to worry about writing uh, login templates, forms, and so on. It's, it's already in there automatically. Well, you can see how I've got all that just add in, the, um, add in the provider itself. Um, and I can log in using those credentials I just created. So you can see, very little code there, I've got a nice bit of authentication for my web application. Uh, what we do now is, so that's just the, the very basic config provider, what we do now is talk about the DBIC provider, which has actually got most of the functionality that I want to talk about. Uh, so again, in order to get the DBIC provider, all we need to do is add a new RAM. I'd like to say, you've got, I've cheated slightly here, I've already got a DBIC schema set up in my application. Um, but again, all I need to do to do that is add the DBIC provider. Um, most, of this, most of the DBIC configuration parameters have got the same defaults. Um, the user's table defaults to use us with the plural. I, because I've, I've dumped my uh, database using the um, DBIC schema generator, it's, I've ended up with a table called user, so I'm just going to specify that, but that's, that's the only thing I need to specify. Uh, I've already got my, um, my DBIC schema set up at the top there. In fact, what I'm actually going to do now, um, but the way that I like to use the DBIC provider is rather than trying to fudge my credentials into the database, I'm actually going to show you the, the reset password functionality. So I actually find it easier to put the user in the database, then reset the password, rather than having to mess about trying to generate my um, encrypted password. Um, so I'll show that now. I'm just going to insert <coughs> all of them is inserted a, a user into my database um, and I'm going to use that in my, uh, my application. 
Uh, sorry, the first of all, I'm actually going to do is have the. Um, so I could just I could just use that and have it now authenticate successfully if I put the password in. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is use the, use the reset password functionality. And in order to, again, this is um, just showing how simple it is really, in order to use the reset password functionality, again, very little configuration, all I do is add a few things to the configuration file, uh, which are these things here. So I say I want to have a reset password handler. Uh, I've got to configure a mailer in order to be able to send the email. Um, there's only one mailer available at the moment, and I use the mail message module, but there's no reason why the ones can be added. Uh, and a few options in there to say who I want it to go from and how I want it to be sent. Um, in fact, I should probably say there's also a log out route uh, created by default as well. Um, because I've restarted the application, I don't need to use that. Uh, so you can see, again, this has all happened by default without me having to add any forms. So I've spoken to I've got a password reset box on the bottom of my login form. I've not listed it there, put my username in. Submit. So I've uh, got a password reset. So this is all I want to do the live demo because you can see how easy it is to get this up and running. Uh, click on the link, reset the password, and that's my password. <coughs> Just better use that. All you need to do is specify the roles table, and again, that's it. Spec specify the roles table. So again, it's simply to log in, it's all logged in. Um, uh, there we go, I've now got access to their role just by adding in that, um, that particular role. Obviously what I've shown you is, but the thing I meant to say at the beginning, which I, I didn't say, is that there's lots of functionality in here to get you running very quickly with lots of the same defaults, but then when you want to come back around and do some slightly more advanced things or customise it, then you can do that. So you might have seen some fairly basic looking forms, um, you might have thought, well actually I don't want to do my password resets quite like that, but you can, you can still do that, um, but this just allows you to get up and running quickly. So these are some of the password functionality um, keywords that are in there, so you can use these in your, your groups, I won't demonstrate them. 
um, various ones to check the current user's password, abilities to check another user's password, um, and ability to change the password. So again, with some very simple code, you, you can get access to that functionality. Mm -hmm. Um, this is, uh, I'll, just, I'll just do the demonstration of this and then uh, I'll think I'll knock the demo on the head. Um, but this is a demonstration of how to create users. So again, I want, wanted a very simple and easy way of being able to create user and application that I have to write lots of code. Um, all I need to do, I'll... Um, it returns to the user. So again, you can see with just a couple of lines of code, I've actually created the user. If I go up to my, my email again, so again, it's, it's, it's set up and uh, created the user. It's used some fairly default text. It's used the host name for the name of the application. Um, so I've got a link to be able to log in. So, um, so again, very quickly, get, get, very quickly to get set up, very quickly to give the user access to the application. I'm just going to sort this through in time so I can uh, get back to the uh, presentation. Okay. So I've done a great user. Um, I'll just go through some of the other features. Again, this is just, just straight out of the box. Um, Password ability to set a password expiring, so again, configuration bar, you just have the, um, the user's password change column uh, to specify where you want the last time stored that they set the password um, and the number of days that it should expire. Uh, I did think about when I was doing this to add some sort of functionality to stop a user logging in at this point when their password has expired, uh, but I thought actually it's better for the developer to be able to specify that because you might want to allow them access to certain routes in order to be able to change their password. So what all that functionality does is give you this uh, that, that rather long keyword there, logged in user. Uh, password expired. And if that's if that's true, uh, then that password is expired, and you can obviously just it's up to you then what you do. I, I put it in the before hook, um, and then redirect them to the password change um, page if that password is there. Time plus successful login. Again, all you need to do is uh, add that into the configuration. Um, just set and recall that login to a true value. Um, say where you want it um, specified, where you want it stored. Um, again, these are at the moment these are only um, all available in the debug provider. Uh, I think. Um, but there's no reason why they can't be added into the other providers. Uh, and in the application, you just, you just make a call to that, uh, that keyword there, uh, or you use the last login. Um, so, what I showed you at the beginning, um, you know, with the reset passwords and login screen, it's all fairly basic, clunky HTML um, pages that don't look very smart in your production web application. It's, it's good to get going, um, but you probably don't want to use them in your, in your final product. Um, so, that's fine because there's actually lots of um, other customization you can do in the application to, to uh, customize that. Uh, for example, you can set a subroutine a login page handler, which will um, specify the, um, the subroutine to be called to return the HTML. Uh, so you know, using that, you can use your own templates and generate a nice, um, a nice login page. Uh, you just need to, if the, the information is all in the manual. You just need to have a couple of um, key HTML fields and then use those instead. Um, or you can actually replace the entire login um, authentication mechanism. Um, just make a simple call to the uh, to the provider and do everything else yourself in terms of how you want that handled. Uh, the same applies to the password reset. So in some of my applications, I've replaced a, a lot of that code if it, just because that's what we wanted in that particular product. Um, for other applications, I've kept it very much just with what's available in the uh, in the module. Um, the same goes for um, configuring the text that's in those password reset emails you saw, um, and also the text that's in the welcome emails. 
Uh, and like I said, you can, you can customize the entire subroutine. So, for example, you can choose just to return the password reset text, i.e., the text you want to actually get an email, or actually, you can specify a subroutine that does the whole of the sending of the email yourself. Um, and all you're provided with is the, um, is the code that goes in the URL. Um, but, like I say, it's the flexibility is open here, really. Um, so, I've just got to touch on um, some potential future changes for the Sensible. Um, this is just stuff I thought of um, sort of this morning, really. Um, one of the things I'd like to do, I haven't really looked at the practicalities of it yet, is rather than um, returning the user as a hash, which is what happens at the moment, so every time you call a logged in user, um, you get your user as a hash. I mean, that's, that's fine to a degree, but I've found that I'm quite often doing code a bit like this. So I get the logged in user, and then I sort of smash it into my own uh, object, and that just gets a bit tedious, um, yeah, so you can probably imagine. So it would be nice if logged in user could be configured to, to return objects. Like I so, I don't know what the practicalities are, but it's, um, but it's something I'd like to look into. Um, we uh, sort of touched on um, the new plugin architecture. Uh, Rappi's done a lot of work actually porting over the plugin to plugin two. How long's it going? Yeah, basically, uh, uh, that uh, the implementation that that was complete, and then you have to take over and roll it out. Okay, but uh, I mean, but the aspiration will, will be to move that to the uh, the plugin two architecture. Hopefully, that'll be able to fairly soon. Yeah, really because it's you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <did that. laughs> um, and, and that's it really. So um, in summary, hopefully the sort of message I'm trying to get across is that um, out of the box you've got a, a very fully featured authentication module that you can get running up running very quickly so you're not spending time writing boring code. Um, but it's extensible and it's configurable um, with all those different features that I've, that I've talked about. Um, 